on Facebook that everyone can hear me. Hopefully, if you can, just comment in the section. I can, mate. Yep. All right. Awesome. We're off and running. Um, oh, well, firstly, uh, yeah, as uh, as we've just been talking, thanks very much, uh, Maddie, for coming on. Um, after a, a, a tough interrogation over the last couple of minutes, everyone has seemed to understand that um, he is not Doug Walter's um, son. He doesn't play for the Bulls, but uh, he does work for Queensland Cricket and he is also one of our academy coaches as well. Um, so today, the aim of the, the chat is really to, to get an insight from Matty um, about other possible career pathways for, for young cricket lovers that potentially might be. Um, looking to be involved in cricket and, and what we what we mean by this and you know every player everyone who is on here and any everyone on this webinar that's hosting it like myself and and peter and matt all i guarantee you wanted to play for australia um but sometimes that doesn't happen um but the beauty of it is is when you find that you aren't in a position to do that there are still plenty of other opportunities to be able to earn a living and and work and live um, by by being involved in a, a sport that you love. Uh, and that's what today is for, um, is to get a bit of a snapshot of how you go about it, what you need to do, what the pathways are there for it, to learn what Maddie does, uh, and then also answer some questions because um, we all here, whether it be an ACI, Queensland Cricket, um, we, we've all worked uh, in the cricket industry for me, since I was about 21, so about nine years as a cricket administrator or a person working in cricket, uh, and I'm sure similar with with Pete and, and Maddie. So, first of all, um, it is um, probably better for you to go through your background. Both, I reckon, start off cricketing because you are still a cricketer. You're playing Premier Cricket, play Premier Premier Ones. Um, so just have a bit of a chat and let us know about, I guess, your journey to get to where you did as a, um, as a player currently. And then also we'll, we'll then talk about the professional administration side as well. Yep. No worries. Uh, yeah, firstly, thanks for having me. Um, pretty excited to be on here and, and help out, uh, with what's going on at the moment. So um, it's good to get on and have a bit of a chat. So thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, my journey started, um, uh, nice and simply from Northern New South Wales. I was born in Ballina, uh, in God's country. And uh, yeah, didn't actually get stuck into cricket until I was about 12 or 13. My dad and I used to play in the backyard, uh, but I never played my first competitive game of cricket, you know, in full whites and kit and everything until I was about 13 uh, for Evans Head uh, Junior Cricket Club. And from there, yeah, enjoyed it a lot, got stuck in um, into the rep scene, playing on, you know, sad days and Sundays, rep cricket in, in uh, that far north coast of New South Wales uh, until I was about 17. Uh, my last year of high school, I basically just got selected out of the blue to play um, at the state championships in New South Wales, at, at the New South Wales state championships uh, and played with a few guys that are, um, you know, um, quite well known. Phil Hughes was one of the guys I used to play with there. Uh, a couple of other guys, um, that are quite well known around sort of cricketing parts in, in Brisbane as well. So, um, and that was probably the highest honours that I had for a long time, just in my in my cricketing career. And then sort of stepped away from the game for a little while whilst I was at uni uh, and travelled overseas and sort of began my path in, into um, the work life. Um, but eventually I ended up in Brisbane at Valley District Cricket Club. And uh, that was in 2012 and just, yeah, started playing like threes and fours there and uh, made my way into first grade and debuted last year at the ripe old age of 31. And uh, 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 yeah, played this season, just gone in ones uh, and twos. Uh, and I've actually retired this year. So that was my last year. So <laughs> hung the boots up. Yeah, hung the boots up. My last week it was against Turnbull. You like that? Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, hung the boots up. So I'll fill in um, here and there if I need to. But uh, my role at the club at the moment is chairman of selectors. Um, I'll still continue to do that. And, yeah, and I'm on the exec at the club there. So volunteering in, in that role um, and also helping out at the club with the um, cricket blast, junior blasters. So still involved heavily at the club, which is, yeah, 
as you can imagine, what I like to do. So, yeah, absolutely. And we sort of cross paths uh, in a professional career um, first, and that's sort of, I guess, um, as I was saying, wanted to sort of get you to elaborate on some previous roles that you've held um, within the cricket yep. industry. And then we'll go into a little bit more about what you're currently doing now after that. Yep. Uh, so I guess I felt um, very lucky to be in the position where I am today um, at the same time, but I feel like I've sort of worked my way into where I am today. So, uh, but at uni, basically it all started for me where I needed to do an internship uh, and complete a few units where uh, I had to basically get that work sort of work experience. Uh, and I was lucky enough to volunteer into a position with the ICC and I went overseas for a year as a volunteer uh, working in Samoa, which is in the Pacific Islands, uh, for a really tiny nation there um, and in population and both in cricket. Uh, and I was there for a year and basically got a really good array of experience um, as a volunteer, working anything from um, you know, managing cricket competitions, working in schools with kids, uh, working with um, you know an executive body uh, and then from there after a year I came back to Australia and got a role with Cricket New South Wales in Tamworth so I was the cricket manager for the Central North region which for anyone in New South Wales um, might know that region that's been split up now into a couple of bigger regions but I used to look after an area that went from almost Newcastle so Maitland area all the way up to the border uh, Went from Tamworth, Armidale, Maureen, Narrabri, uh, yeah, Singleton, looked after that whole sort of range. So it was almost seven, 800 kilometres from top to bottom. And then, uh, so that was in 2010. And then 2012 was when we crossed paths, uh, Hamo. So I joined Queensland Cricket in a club coordinator role and basically spent the next few years working in that role. Uh, and then in around 2013, I took on a role looking after my cricket for Queensland. So everyone should know that system, uh, looking up your stats every, uh, every Saturday evening or Sunday, when, depends on when you jump on there and when you play. And from there, yeah, took on a few different various roles at Queensland Cricket to where I am now, where I'm the schools manager for um, Queensland Cricket. So basically that role just empowers me looking after and managing staff and providing strategy on what we do in the school space to get more kids into the game and get them into club land. Yeah, nice. So on, on, your, on your current role, so does that mean uh, you, you'd sort of, uh, like you said, you're managing staff and going into school. So what, what does that entail? Do they go in and run clinics? Do they go and do advertisements for people, like for the, for yep. the My Cricket or for Inter Cricket or whatever, or the Blast, or what do they do? Yep, so uh, there's heaps of different things that we try to do these, uh, these days. So... Um, so the first and foremost, it's all about getting kids to clubs. So everything we do, that's the main focus so that we can get kids like yourselves that are here uh, watching, playing the game and enjoying the game. So, uh, so for us, we go in, we work with the teachers really closely on, um, and building a relationship with them so that they can familiarise themselves with cricket and uh, get a passion for cricket themselves. And then basically we'll run clinics in there, which, um, you know, just the half hour sort of lessons or the 40 minute lessons. We'll run uh, school cups where we're getting the kids playing, um, you know, either games against other schools for 30 or 40 minutes, which is just plastic bat and ball. Uh, or we'll look to try and get kids um, active through uh, a program called Mascots Challenge where the teachers actually run in class, uh, just um, real sort of low uh, level of hand, um, hand-eye hand motor coordination skills. Um, and the kids are just basically doing a bit of a brain break, brain break in the classroom where they're... Uh, getting stuck into some cricket so yeah that's sort of the main the main couple of areas that we look after so yeah it's quite quite an important piece where we're just getting all those kids excited and pumped up for cricket and then hopefully uh, we can pass on some promotion after that where they can then go and join their local club or, or their local centre and uh, get stuck into the game. Yeah nice. Um, obviously even just rattling off your previous experiences and everything like that, I guess probably one of the benefits is uh, travel. You've, you've obviously done a fair bit and a fair bit of time. It, it, go into a little bit more of that in terms of is, what, is it, what does it entail in some of these roles? Is it, are you just sitting in the office all day, you know, ringing up, talking on phones or laptops or what, what, what sort of goes into um, the, the day in the life of a cricket manager right. or a schools manager or a club manager? 
Yeah, I've again, yeah, it's a really good point. I thinking about this coming into the interview today. Uh, cricket's actually taken me to four different countries, so obviously not including Australia. Um, it's taking me to uh, four different states around Australia, so uh, it's been pretty exciting in that. And then it's taken me right across Queensland and pretty much every sort of major centre in Queensland, and then a lot of non-major centres in Queensland as well. So um, I was lucky enough to go to Papua New Guinea uh, in 2015 and travel over to work with PNG Cricket. Uh, and help train staff over there. Uh, I was lucky enough, obviously, to be in Samoa in 2009 uh, when I went over there initially. And I've also been to Scotland and England and played over there and, uh, and yeah, obviously have a really good time over there. Um, and then within, you know, Australia themselves, I obviously travelled to Melbourne quite a bit and worked with Cricket Australia and help provide support and guidance and also get some training myself by heading down there. And been yeah worked in New South Wales and travelled there a lot of the time uh, a lot of the time uh, and spent a lot of time there. And then across Queensland, my current role um, has me working with the staff that are based in uh, up north. So yeah, Cairns, Townsville, uh, Mackay, uh, yeah, Rocky, the whole way down the coastline. Basically working with all the staff. So there's a lot of travel involved, but at the same time, um, yeah, a fair bit of work in the office and and working with the the team that are down. Uh, in the Brisbane area and SEQ area, so getting out to Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Woomba, Ipswich, catching up with all the staff that are around there. So, yeah, fair bit of travel, but it doesn't seem like a lot um, because, yeah, there's 200 working days in the year and you're only probably out for maybe 30 or 40 of them, but the rest of the time you're sort of in the office. So, yeah. Very nice. Um, Pedro, Pete, have you got any sort of questions before oh, we move just up. around and sort of, I guess, similar to, there's a question here from Sadaf, but, and he's, he's sort of asking about, you know, do you need a degree, a uh, university degree to be a, you know, like a selector or a high-ranking coach? Probably more so go like in your, with your sort of journey, Matt, obviously, did you say, did you mention what you were studying at uni when you did your internship? No, I didn't. So I probably should have mentioned that. Uh, so yeah, at, the Southern Cross University in Lismore. Uh, I studied a Bachelor of Sport Tourism Management. Yeah. Uh, and although the degree has helped me a lot, it's definitely been the experience that has allowed me to um, progress my career. So um, there's sort of key moments for me that has allowed me to um, yeah, get to where I am today. So one of those was actually when I was at uni, um, there was a, a position in one of the um, classes in one of the units that I was in where we had to we had to run this whole big fun run, and so they needed three leaders, and they need a leader for sponsorship to get money in to run the, the fun run. They needed um, a leader for operations, and they needed a leader for managing the staff. So I put my hand up for being the leader of the sponsorship, and it was sort of a moment where I just sat there and was like, I need to make sure that I'm putting myself in a good position here um, to allow myself to um, you know apply for a job later on that might. Um, you know, that I might land because of this. And funny enough, because of that, it gave me a lot of really good experience that got me in the volunteer role to go overseas and travel to Samoa. Uh, and again, I tossed that up, which was sort of a, a big question of whether I should do it or not. But because um, it's a year of my life to go overseas, I'd never traveled overseas before. But it gave me so much experience um, working with all these different sort of, um, you know, niches within an organization that had I... Um, tried to bide my time and, and work somewhere else. It may have, ta may have taken a long time to get to that place. Um, so I guess the, the two sort of key opportunities there were, um, yeah, basically putting my hand up when the, the time was right and volunteering and um, sacrificing a little bit of my sort of time to be able to get to where I was and where I am today. Yeah, and I guess you're in a pretty good uh, position to comment on this is I guess the, people, the majority of the people you work with, yes, there'd be quite a few... Um, coaches, etc., that obviously have extensive cricketing backgrounds. Yeah. But for I guess everyone listening and watching now, are there what percentage have been to university or do have a degree compared to those that might have just, as you say, maybe have experience in some other walk of life and have you know got lucky slash maybe worked really hard and gone down a different avenue to to land a role with QC Queensland Cricket. Uh I think um, the beauty of uh, where we are now um, is that a lot of people may not have had a degree when they first came into the role, but um, because they've had that experience 
Um, the sporting organisations have backed that up by allowing um, staff to study at the same time and then so that they can get a degree um, and sort of combine that with the work that they might be doing or an interest that they might have later on and progress to. So, um, yeah, I'd say half, probably half the people. Um, anyone who's sort of my age and older, so I'm 32, so anyone that's sort of around my age would probably have a degree by now. And then, yeah, some of the guys that are younger or girls that are younger might be, yeah, working towards getting a degree or have a degree already or, yeah, in the process of about to start the study. So... Now, I guess the majority of the people watching, like well, the kids, you know, the majority uh, between 10 to 14, so it might be a little bit early to start, you know, yeah. um, locking in a career in cricket, cricket admin or, or some, a development officer or something now, but what advice would you give to maybe, you know, a young cricketer who potentially is 15, 16, 17, um, you know, still has aspirations maybe to play at a higher level, but really want, want to um, get into a career in cricket? Yeah, uh, so I had a good thing about this as well. And I think um, one of the, the great things that you could do would be looking to volunteer your time around the local cricket club. So uh, a lot of clubs at the moment have cricket blast programs or they're running some sort of junior uh, cricket co coaching component. So uh, even if you're 14, 15, 16, 17, you're able to give back and get some experience of what it's like uh, by going along and helping the club out. And it could be in any aspect. The club could, um, you know, have you guys entering data into my cricket? It could be anything. Um, it, whatever you have an interest in, I'm sure the club could accommodate if you're seriously keen on, on getting some experience. So, and I think that's a really good um, thing that you can look to do is help out um, around the club and, and gain that experience. My first um, volunteering experience is when I was 15 or 16 and I was coaching Milo in the cricket. So, yeah, sweet mate. Nice. No um, how, how many start, like you might not know the exact number and it might be a, a bit different right now, but pre-isolation, how many, how many staff would be at Queensland Cricket, do you, do you reckon? Do you have a number or do you know a ballpark figure? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so probably a ballpark figure. Uh, we'd have around 80 staff at Queensland yep. Cricket. And so that's just different. Cricket alone. Yep. Are so, there different sort of spots? Like, you know, where, are they all in the one role? Are they under come on the banner? If they aren't, what sort of divisions are there? Yep, so... Uh, the one that I work in is called community cricket and we're by far the biggest. So, uh, cause as you can imagine, our roles are spread right out across the state. We're trying to get kids into the game right across the state. So we have a lot of staff, which we call field force, which are out and about, um, trying to um, get kids into the game, but also there's roles that are looking after the clubs and helping clubs become nice and sustainable, uh, and build really good spaces for kids to be able to uh, enter the game and stay in the game and have good facilities. Uh, and yeah, so community cricket is by far the biggest. And then we have our marketing team and I guess the heat is what we call it. So everyone knows the Brisbane heat, hopefully. Uh, so we have heat and commercial, which fall under a banner there. So there's probably 10 to 12 staff there. Uh, we have match operations. So um, all the games that are run at AB Field and across Queensland. Uh, so the ones that are up in Mackay and Cairns for the WBBL and some of the um, uh, Shepherd Shield matches that we have up there, plus the games that are at the Gabba. Uh, we have match operations that look after that. We have our finance department, uh, and I guess that sort of encompasses our HR department. So it's probably five or six staff that are in that um, department there. And we also have our high performance um, component. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically accounting from anyone from that's managing players, welfare, all the way through to your typical uh, high performance coaches, um, you know, your state coaches and all that sort of stuff. And then we have um, some would think would be the best jobs of all, which is our groundies. Uh, so, um, yeah, they basically look after various fields around Brisbane at the moment um, with the Premier One being Allen Border. Yeah, nice. So even in that regard, working in the cricket industry still, there are, you know, a host of other avenues that players can go down if they think that they like marketing and advertising similar to stuff that we do with the ACI well then that's there's a legitimate pathway to work within cricket still there or finance you're an accountant and you want to work in HR or all these other aspects there's, there's so many different spots um have you got that's, anything else Pidge no no mate that's about yep. it answered all my questions all right I reckon um I reckon we um we'll, we'll go up to the Q&A's yeah uh, and we'll see um, we'll see what we've got here. So, 
one other thing I was just going to add whilst you're looking, if you wanted to have a, yeah. um, so a couple of, I guess the, the really good thing that uh, Queensland cricket has sort of offered me is that there's a really good balance with work and life. So, um, so although, you know, it's, it's busy at certain times of the year, it's also a really good balance between um, being able to get home, spend time with family or, um, you know, hang out with your friends or being able to actually play cricket on a Saturday, um, which other jobs and roles and stuff like that might not allow. Um, and the other beautiful thing about working in Queensland cricket is I've been able to uh, basically be involved in multiple different things outside of my role. So although I'm the school's manager or I've been a cricket manager, I've been able to travel away with um, the intellectually disabled team and, and manage them uh, at the state championships down in, um, in Geelong. And I've been able to go to Alice Springs and help um, Northern Territory cricket um, in, you know, teaching the staff there and how to run a level one coaching course or, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I've been over to Papua New Guinea and helped uh, the staff over there basically run, run a little bit better and a little bit smoother. So it's been, although, you know, every it might seem like the job is the same day on day um, sometimes, but it's quite varied in everything that we do. And it's a really sort of good mix of um, being able to cross into the high performance department or cross into the finance department or cross into, you know, heat and commercial and help them out and match days um, at the gather and stuff like that. So, yeah, just thought I'd add that. I like it. Um, Lucas Clausen, I think his last name is, he's asked, how old do you have to or do you need to be to do a level one coaching course? Uh, 16. 16. Very good. Yeah, that's, all right, that's something I reckon that would be a good first step as well for a lot of young players. Go out there, you know, even if you're nervous, uh, don't know anyone, just just get out there, get your level ones. It's it's fairly easy, you learn a lot. And then also, the more you coach, the better sort of player you become, I think. You also learn a lot more about your games as well. And it opens up a, a, a host of different avenues in that sort of, in that circle. And there's a heap of different skills in, within coaching as well, isn't there? You know, the ability to communicate, manage time, um, project manage, things like that, that even if you aren't a full-time coach in the Big Bash, it's still going to give you a whole host of um, techniques that you can you can use in so many other um, parts of your work or your life or social parts. Um, we, touched, we touched on it briefly, but Adam Eastgate just wanted to sort of go a little bit more in depth. You spoke about your degree and everything like that, but he sort of said, what degrees are there at uni uh, that are about cricket or associated with cricket? Um, could you name a few? Um, you know, is it like an umpiring degree? Is it coaching or... Is it more of a, an administration where it's not a specialist cricket thing, it's more the role of sports marketing and stuff like that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I wouldn't be able to name sort of the different types of degrees that are out there. Um, but what I can say is that, uh, yeah, it depends on sort of the niche that you're looking to get into. So um, like you mentioned, if you wanted to study uh, marketing, um, you could do marketing across the board and in, in, uh, at pretty well any university. Uh, and then when it comes to tailoring your major subjects, you would tailor around sports so that you're getting that edge. Uh, and yeah, and then if you wanted to, like recently, we just had a volunteer at Queensland Creek for the last five months. He finished his degree, but he came on board and was working for us just as a volunteer to try and get some experience in the industry. So um, so that would be yeah an aspect that I, I'd definitely look into. Uh, and then for myself, like my, my degree was a sport tourism um, degree, but I sort of always knew that I wanted to go into sport, although I had to study some tourism components um, and yeah, learn a little bit about that. Uh, and then, for example, if you're looking to get into coaching, then you'd be looking at exercise physiology degrees or uh, yeah, like coaching degrees at TAFE. Um, TAFE offer a lot of uh, opportunities in that aspect as well. So, and we've had in a program um, that's recently kicked off at the start of the year with TAFE Queensland, where we've had uh, I think it was 11 TAFE students come in and work. Um, with us for for what was going to be the year it's now been postponed with everything's going on but yeah yeah so there's heaps of different avenues for you to be able to study and then transfer those skills into what whatever you want to go towards in life really yeah nice uh, big tommy armstrong um, has asked he's, he's a, in queensland he's asked do you need to be a community cricket coach to be a qc casual so obviously you have the opportunity I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more, but also Queensland Cricket and a lot of other cricketing state bodies uh, offer out opportunities for casual staff as well. Um, do you need yeah. to have your community cricket coaching course to be uh, eligible to do anything like that? 
Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So um, just I'll elaborate on the, the actual role itself. So uh, we have casual staff that we employ to come on and basically help us, um, I guess our full-time staff at Queensland Cricket, uh, because, because there's so much going on across the state, we can't get to everyone at the same time. Uh, so clubs are crying out for our help. So we employ casual staff that go out and basically help the clubs uh, where we need to or uh, the schools. So they're going out to schools and jumping in there and teaching teachers how to coach and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's really good to have your casual, um, sorry, your community cricket course um, up, your, up your sleeve. But uh, it's something you can do really quickly if you need to when the season rolls around. Um, the one thing that I can recommend when it comes to the coaching is going on and doing the online component. So I'm not sure if that's something that you guys have mentioned to the kids before. Um, yeah. but there's an intro to cricket. It's free. Um, it's all online. Uh, so that's basically the theory component to the community coaching course where they go out and do the actual practical component. And yeah, they're, they're there live on the day with the, the instructor. So it's called Introduction to Cricket. It's free. It's online. Head to, I think it's community.cricket.com.au and you can sign up and, and do that course for free. Very nice. Courses on there as well. It's not just the community course. You can do your umpires course. Everything's on there. Yeah, very good. Uh, James Gordon has asked uh, maybe a golden question. How do you get a job at Queensland Cricket? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, so basically, it just comes down to, I guess, um, meeting the criteria that, you know, we're looking for in those roles. So someone that's got a lot of experience um, in sport, it doesn't have to be cricket. Um, they have a passion for sport. Uh, they like to, uh, I guess, um, get involved, help out, go above and beyond uh, around, um, you know, the sport itself and what we're trying to do. Um, the, the last thing we want is someone to come on board and, and um, basically not share the same passion that we have for uh, getting kids into the game, helping our cricket clubs become better uh, and um, be able to create a really safe space for our kids. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be the main few key pointers is, is just having that experience and having that passion. Uh, and it's something that everyone can achieve by going out and just, you know, getting stuck in around their local cricket club um, or speaking to, you know, other sports. It doesn't have to be cricket as well, obviously, um, and getting that experience. Nice. Love it. Uh, we'll finish on a couple more um, and then we'll let you get back to, to dad, dad duties. Um, um, I just had one, but someone then typed it and I can't find what it was. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Dwayne Field has got one. It's what is your, what's your favorite hobby outside of cricket? If you're, you're playing cricket, and then you're working in cricket, it's obviously cricket overload. And for some people um, here who are absolute cricket lovers and 12 and 13, they probably don't think that's such a bad thing, but it definitely can burn, burn you out. But what, what do you sort of do outside of your work and playing when you were playing before you hung the boots up? Uh, well, not that this would be relevant to anyone that's listening, uh, <laughs> but you know, my family is, is a pretty big one at the moment. Um, but I guess before that, uh, definitely golf. Love my golf. So golf, going to the beach, uh, just, yeah, sort of having those nice chilled Sundays because um, you're working five days a week and then playing cricket on Saturday most of the time. So, yeah, nice relaxing day. Bit of golf, bit of music, a uh, bit of beach. Always goes down really well. Very nice. Um, Jacob uh, Lanyon and a couple of others asked, did you have an idol growing up as a cricketer, like playing? And, you know, did you have a favourite player? Yeah, Glenn McGrath would have Ooh, to be. Who uh, uh, are? Yeah, I mean, to be able to be that accurate uh, at that pace and be so consistent and he's New South Welshman, so what more could you want? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, last one, Hamish McInnes asked, do you think you ha that having a job around cricket will help you when you're playing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be able to uh, you know, talk cricket five days a week and then go play it on um, on the Saturday or Sunday, depending on what's happening. Uh, so being able to talk to, you know, other people in the office that love the game, we obviously have the facilities there so we can go and train at the nets if we want to have a hit. Don't tell my boss. Uh, and, um, 
yeah, like you obviously got heaps of different people around the office, like, you know, Darren Lehman, Andy Bickle, uh, Wade Seckham, they're all in the office there. So if you run, them in, you run into them in the hallways, uh, you can chat cricket if you want to and, you know, ask them little bits and bobs about different questions. You've got all the players that are there floating around all the time. Um, so you're getting exposed to, um, you know, having good conversation with them about the game and how they've gone and um, what they're working on and stuff like that. Uh, you get exposed to what they go through in the preseason and their levels of fitness, uh, you know, the training regime that they go through. So you get an understanding of how hard you actually have to work if you want to make it to that level, uh, which is why I've never made it to that level because I never <laughs> worked that hard in my life. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, mate, it's absolutely like working, working the game. Like even, even just doing the level one coaching course uh, and listening to an instructor talk about the game you just get a great understanding of uh, how it works and, and areas that you can go back and work on yourself. And a lot of the time when you're sitting in those courses, you're like, oh, man, like that's something I'm definitely going to work on or I'm going to try and fix my wrist position when I'm bowling or I'm going to try and bowl that slow ball and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Love it. All right, well, uh, that's about it for me. Pidge, have you got anything else to finish oh, up? No, brilliant, mate. I think... Matty, you, you, you've shown like how like you can just see how passionate you are about cricket. And I'm sure everyone watching is as passionate or even more passionate um, being younger. So I think it just, you can just see that, you know, finding something that you love and um, if you can, you know, find a, find a job in, in that as well. And it's just like you're ticking all the boxes, are you? Yeah, mate, it's, it's been pretty special. Uh, I think, yeah, as I said at the start, like, just being able to look back and saying that I've took, took those opportunities as a volunteer and I can safely say that's where it got me to where I am now. Um, you know, if I hadn't have done that, who knows where I'd be. But the one thing is for sure that, you know, I'm really appreciative of where I am. I'm really grateful and uh, yeah, just absolutely loving, you know, what's going on at the moment. So um, in terms of obviously cricket, not what's going on with Corona, but yeah. yeah. So, no, nah, it's, it's good. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Awesome. No, you've been a legend, mate. Uh, yeah, and again, one of our All Star Academy members, uh, well, not members, one of our coaches in the Brisbane North. Um, do what you've done our youth, our junior, and our foundation over time, haven't you? you you've you've yeah. gone from eight to right up to seventeen year olds. You span right across. So yeah, uh, help. Really appreciate it. Enjoy helping out uh, when I can. I know Dean uh, sends me a message here and there. He tries <laughs> to get me on a few shifts. I'm always like trouble, <laughs> or I get on there. It just depends, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love it. It's been uh, really good uh, to be able to help out those boys. And there's certainly some good conversations that always come out of the chats with the Peterson and boys. That's yep. for sure. When you're coaching that. <laughs> love it. Awesome. awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, mate. Really do appreciate it. Um, as for everyone else on here, uh, seven o'clock. So two more hours and then you get to, to have a chat um, to Alex Carey. So not sure. I reckon the Manny Walter one's probably better, but... Um, better sort of company. Not, we'll, we'll see. Not we'll see you judge. <laughs> awesome. No, enjoy, boys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks mate. mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.